I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Go, go! After 17 years of playing everyone's favorite cigar-chomping immortal mutant, Hugh Jackman is finally hanging up his Wolverine claws and going out in brutal R-rated fashion with Logan. And with its stellar reviews, it goes to show there's still some life left in the X-Men franchise. Legion is a big hit on FX, Deadpool 2 is on the way. I think it's safe to say the X-Men will live on after Wolverine has made his exit. In fact, others have tried doing their spin on the X-Men formula, which leads us to the 2006 family comedy, Zoom. Academy for Superheroes. This Tim Allen vehicle, based on the children's book Amazing Adventures from Zoom's Academy, sees the tool man trying to train a gang of prepubescent mutants into becoming full-blown superheroes. Now, didn't we see Disney make a movie like this one year beforehand? Why, yes, you did. It was called Sky High, but that movie's gone on to become sort of a cult classic, while Zoom has gone on to become the DVD your crackhead cousin uses as a drink coaster. Not only did this Z-grade X-Men knockoff get ripped by critics and ignored by audiences, but it was also one of the three movies Tim Allen was nominated for at the 2007 Razzies. And seeing as we've already tackled this Santa Claus 3, why the hell not move on to reviewing Zoom? Also, how the hell have I managed to get stuck with three Tim Allen movies over the course of a year? I don't even like Tim Allen that much. I never even fucking watched Home Improvement. I was too busy watching Urkel because I'm racist against white people. Did I do that? So through the magic of cheap flash animated comic book panels, we learn of this movie's backstory about the Zenith Team, a group of superheroes in the 1970s saving the world while getting their powers enhanced through radiation treatments given by the government. But the radiation turns one of the heroes, Concussion, into an evil villain who kills off most of the team and forces his brother Zoom to banish him to another dimension, thus ending the Zenith Team for good. But 30 years later, General Rip Torn finds out Concussion is busting out of the dimension and threatening to create an intergalactic kicker. So he and Dr. Chevy Chase agree it's time to create a new Zenith team, mentored by the middle-aged Zoom, played by Tim Allen, who's traded in his superpowers to become an auto mechanic. <laughs> even though he could have easily pursued a career as a door-to-door -door vibrator. <laughs> and so Zoom is shanghaied by the military into choosing four new young mutants to make up the new Zenith team. Cindy, a little girl of super strength. Dylan, a teenage boy who can turn invisible, played by Jimmy Olsen from Batman vs. Superman. Tucker, a little boy who can inflate his body at will, played by Spencer Breslin. Seriously, why was this kid always in movies with Tim Allen? Did they have a Michael Jackson thing going on? And Summer, a teenage girl with telekinesis played by a young Kate Mara. Oh, so we've got Kate Mara in a movie about young superheroes being trained in a military compound for most of the movie, and they only have an actual fight scene at the ending? Oh, well, I can't possibly think of another time that's gone wrong. <laughs> Yes, if you thought the Josh Trank Fantastic Four was plotting and aimless, you ain't seen nothing until you've seen Zoom. Because even though the movie's ostensibly about Tim Allen and these kids facing off against the Winter Soldier over here, most of the movie is montages of them doing training exercises and goofing around with each other, intercut with scenes of Tim Allen realizing how much of a drunk wash-up he is, and developing a relationship with the staff psychologist, played by Courtney Cox, who is secretly a huge fan of Zoom's comic book adventures. It's a comic book. It's government propaganda. They made it up. None of that stuff is true. Looks true to me. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> and to add to the disaster of this plotless shitty mess, I've got four words for you. Songs by Smash Mouth. Oh God. Somebody oh God. Won't tell me the word. Because I guess performing on the county fair circuit can't pay all the bills. While the rest of the soundtrack can best be described as... Now that's what I call every song that got overplayed on the radio after 9-11. I can't stand to fly. What, you guys couldn't spring for some Lincoln Park? And let us not forget Chevy Chase, who has gone from the suave smartass of Caddyshack and Fletch to a sad, bloated old fart. Every attempt he makes at humor in this film is like watching your grandpa in the final days of his dementia.
This movie is so much of a mess that it inadvertently becomes kind of fascinating. It's a perfect example of a kid's movie that thinks of kids as easily distracted morons, with its product placement and candy-colored pop-punk soundtrack. And I don't usually hold ADR dialogue against a movie, but the redubbing they do in this movie is so goddamn obvious. Our only hope lies with Marsha and Zoom training the kids. You can't be considering gamma radiation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a threadbare excuse of a story held together by flimsy pieces of scotch tape. And for the most serious bad movie masochist, it's not a complete waste of time. But for those of you who want actual story or jokes with your kiddie superhero movies, then just go watch Sky High instead. That's actually a coherent movie with a lot of humor and heart. But more importantly, it has Bruce Campbell in it. Yes, when it comes to superhero flicks, hail to the king, baby. It takes a true mutant to drink a whole lot of booze without passing out. So let's see if you can pass that test in the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time you hear another delightful Smash Mouth song, including their blasphemous cover of Queen and David Bowie's Under Pressure. It takes a real effort to piss on this song more than Vanilla Ice did, and you've managed to pull it off, fellas. Way to go! You spot another random cameo, whether it's Biff Tannen as Dylan's teacher, Squiggy from Laverne and Shirley as a Wendy's employee, Take me with you. or in this picture of Tim Allen's old team, when you spot Wilmer Valderrama, Alexis Bledel, and Devin Aoki. I would say that these guys would have made a better movie than this one, but uh, would they though? You see another transition effect between scenes. Na 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 Bad movie! And take a double shot when you see Spencer Breslin inflate his head. Oh, well now if you'll excuse me, I shall now proceed to shriek in terror. Oh! What a Jesus is that supposed to be? And on the nudity watch, though we do have a young Kate Mara in here, she won't show anything in this family-friendly movie. Wait, I just realized. Fantastic Four also had a villain who escaped from another dimension. Did the filmmakers of the Fantastic Four reboot just rip off their story from Zoom Academy for Superheroes? <laughs> On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Zoom Academy for Superheroes is unable to mutate itself into a good movie and graduates with a diploma of four out of 10. If I want a movie about amateur superheroes with a Smash Mouth soundtrack, then I shall stick with Mystery Men. Hey now, you're an all-star, you're an all-star, all-star. I'm Jesse Schaefer, JoeBlow.com, and I would like to sincerely apologize to the lead singer of Smash Mouth for all the jokes I've made at your expense. So if you're watching Guy Fieri, I am sorry. I think you're a great singer and an even better chef. Wait, wait, wait what? They're two different guys? Hey, now. Hey, now. Joe Blow, he sure likes to drink a lot. And Joe Blow watches movie like the hero. We like to poo in our pants. We like to That's poo not in the script. <laughs>